A fun fact, smartphone photography, it's been a thing now for years. And that's actually for a good reason. Smartphones are available, reliable, and most importantly, portable. And these attributes have come a long way to making the smartphone essentially 2020's Swiss Army knife. Social apps like Facebook and Instagram have made cameras a major category in the smartphone industry. And the latest SoCs are even rivaling some laptops in terms of performance. But can they replace your cameras and computers for editing videos? Well, I've tried for two weeks. Here's what I found out. Now, there were more apps than I expected for making quite quality videos on a smartphone. Most notably, KineMaster, Blow, PowerDirector, and Adobe's own Rush. The last one for some reason wasn't available in the Play Store. Maybe it's just in my region, South Korea. But the remaining three worked just fine. My weapon of choice for this project was the LG V50. And I did have a smudge of hope that at least one of the apps would utilize the V50's dual screen. I mean, the V50 ships KineMaster pre-installed for crying out loud. So I expected a little more. But the nope. experience of video editing on the other hand was unexpected. I personally chose to stick with the Blow, which I'll get into in a minute. But for one thing, the obvious advantage to smartphone video editing was in its one device for all platform. The simplicity of filming with your smartphone just inside your pocket and then directly editing the clip on the go. It doesn't hurt that the Snapdragon 855 is also really capable of video rendering. Moreover, the feature set was almost a complete package. Transitions, color corrections, effects, background music with voice recording for narration, it was all here. And the UI itself was surprisingly easy to learn. And maybe the most important, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than the big guns, namely Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. But there were definitely some downfalls. For one, sound waves were a lot less accurate than I want them to be, which meant selectively getting rid of traffic or breathing noise doesn't exactly work out too well. I often had to deal with some chopped audio. Also, there's just no way of getting around it. Editing video on a screen this small is a bit of a hassle, and while it could be improved with a stylus, we don't all have a Note 10 now, do we? And if you're trying to use multiple layers for videos, titles, and soundtracks, well, you're often limited to just two or three. Now, my biggest impression I had from all three apps was that they were focused on allowing you to create quality videos with ease, without feeling like you're missing out on too much. And I would agree, they have accomplished that. There definitely does seem to be an audience for this category, but me personally, I just couldn't hang with the idea of using it as my main editing software. Why you ask? Well, for one, I'm probably already quite spoiled from using Adobe. And two, this may be a preference thing, but I don't think it's all that tempting to change platforms yet. If you have the necessary conditions and equipment for getting good audio, or if your focus is to create neat, simple videos, I think this will more than suffice. The added bonus of affordability will also make this an easier reach than the PC ones. Having said, that doesn't mean you can't have the best of both worlds. Out of the three apps, I chose Blow, and I decided to stick with this one, mainly for two reasons. A. Simplicity. B. Price. It's lacking in features compared to KineMaster or PowerDirector. The absence of a landscape mode, just a single timeline for each video, title, and audio, and comparatively a smaller library of effects and transitions. But, as I said, I'm planning on using mobile video editing as a secondary option. When I don't have access to my computer or I just want to wrap up a quick home video. For that, the flow is just perfect. And even the portrait style UI in this case might take extra points for ease of use. And for all that, a one-time purchase of 8,900 won. Roughly $7. 12,000 in iOS though. So this has been it for my experience of mobile video editing on a smartphone. If you have any questions, please leave it down in the comments so we can further discuss. And pressing the subscribe button would be highly appreciated. Thank you, and I'll see you next week.